Hi everyone, uh, welcome. I hope that you are enjoying the Living Room Fest so far. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Ben Eisenstein and I made a virtual choir. I'm going to tell you about it in three parts. Part one, it's conception. Part two, it's execution. And part three is when I actually present it to you. Uh, so let's talk about the conception. And before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit of background information about me. I am a musician, I am a singer, I am a vocal arranger, and I'm a violinist. Uh, and over the past few months, I lost my ability to do a lot of those. Um, I lost my ability to play the violin when I got nerve damage in my arms uh, and was really unable to play safely and without tingling or pain in my forearms and hands. Um, I lost my ability to sing. I didn't so much lose my ability to sing as I lost the people who I sing with. So I do the majority of my singing, or I did the majority of my singing, in an acapella group at Brandeis called Starving Artists. They're some of the closest friends that I've made in college. I love singing with them. I love doing it. Unfortunately, I am a senior, and this semester, things got cut short. So I, I lost that as well. Uh, so here I am, a musician who spends most of his time in Boston, who is now back in, in Chicago with his family, struggling to find a way to make music again and find some semblance of normal. Um, so what I was thinking is my acapella group is out of work. There are about 10 other acapella groups at Brandeis who are also out of work. And there are two choirs at Brandeis who are also out of work. So here's my idea is, is in the tradition of other people who have done this before, most notably Eric, Eric Whitaker, check out his virtual choirs on YouTube. They're astounding. They're beautiful. Um, is to do this kind of project is to send out the call to not just Brandeis students, but anyone who wants to, to participate in a virtual choir um, that we can make together while still being alone and safe. Uh, so that's the conception. That's how it came about. So now I'm going to talk about the execution, how I actually did it. This is going to maybe get a little bit technical. I hope we're going to get through it. Oh boy. hope we're going to get through it kind of fast. Um, so I chose a song that I already had an arrangement of, Hide and Seek by Imogen Heap. Beautiful song. Fantastic artist. Uh, and I already had an arrangement that I was going to use with my own group, Starving Artist. Modified that for a larger ensemble. Fantastic. The thing I had to think about was all the logistics. You have an ensemble of, I have no idea how many people, uh, singing not at the same time. How do you keep them all in the same key? How do you get them all to sing at the same time? How do you get them to cut off together? And all of those things that you think about as a, as a choir director. Uh, so the way I did this was I made recordings. Um, I made... Uh, digital musical instrument recordings, and I made recordings of my own voice singing all 11 parts, uh, synced those to a metronome, and then recorded myself conducting the song, uh, which was very strange to do, conducting no one in my room alone, for people to follow and listen to and watch while they recorded their own tracks. Great. The next thing I have to do is set up the, the online infrastructure for people to actually participate. Um, and I did that using Google Drive, uh, the next thing that I did was I waited. I waited for quite a while for all the submissions to roll in. In the end, over 30 people sent in a total of over 85 videos uh, for me to edit. I probably spent close to 20 hours editing. So now I'm going to tell you not everything that I did, but I would say the four most important things that I did to the sound clips that I got from people so that I could make this not into just a jumble of people singing, but into a, an organized choir. Um, this is not an order of when I did it, this is an order of importance. The most important thing I did was synchronize the time so that everyone started and ended at the same time. The second most important thing I did was normalizing the volume. So as you can imagine, if people are recording by themselves in their room, there's no like thinking about I have to be less loud than this guy or more loud than this guy. And more to the point, people are all recording with their own microphones. Some people are standing, you know, right up into their microphones. Some people are standing 10 feet away. And that's going to create a huge disparity in the volume of the tracks. So I had to adjust some. I had to bring some a little bit up, some way down, so that they're all about the same volume. The third thing I did, inevitably, people are going to make mistakes when they sing. People are going to hold notes for too long. People are going to sing wrong notes. People are going to sing wrong words. I methodically went through each of the probably about 85 tracks and cut out all of the mistakes. Um, and then the fourth thing I did, which was 
I'd say fourth in importance, but I would honestly rank these all number one, was removing the noise. People are recording on iPhone microphones, which are okay, they're not fantastic. And over all of the tracks, you hear something like, you hear that kind of white noise, which is either the microphones or it's, it's HVAC noise or it's anything. Um, and I, I discovered that Adobe Audition uh, has an excellent denoiser and I just denoised everything which made the, the final product sound just a lot cleaner. That's not all that I did. If you're interested in learning more about this process for any reason, whether it's just out of curiosity or because you wanna make one of these things yourself, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email is beneisenstein at sbcglobal.net. If you want to contact me and don't remember that, please get in touch with, uh, with Ingrid or with anyone on the committee or find someone who knows me. I would love to talk more about this. So now just two more things before we actually present the product. Thing one, this is not finished. I did not anticipate quite how long it was gonna take me to do this. Right now I have the audio piece ready and the visual piece is not ready. Once it's ready, I'll try to have people from the Festival of the Arts Committee send out the link to where I'll have it uploaded on YouTube. Um, I'll try to make that available. It will be on YouTube if you search uh, image and heap hide and seek virtual choir. I hope you'll find it. Um, and the last thing that I want to do is I want to thank a whole lot of people. Uh, so the first thing is I actually want to thank a, a number of the softwares I used. So I used Google Drive and their free cloud services. Definitely could not have done this without them. Um, I want to thank the good people at Apple for making uh, Logic Pro 10 a fantastic digital audio workstation that allowed me to, to make this project. And finally uh, to Adobe they recently made their entire suite of software free for students to use uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. They have an amazing denoiser in Adobe Audition. Uh, definitely would have suffered without that. Uh, so I want to thank them for allowing me to use that software for free. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Ben Maffa, Noah Barshane, and Rena Cohen, who all participated in the project and also acted as consultants, technical or otherwise, because I'd never done this before and I had another few sets of ears to listen and it was really helpful. And then I finally want to give a heartfelt thank you to every single singer who participated of their own free will in this project to make this with me and to make this with each other. Many of them were my friends and family. Some of these singers though were people I'd never even met. And that's one of the most special things about this for me is that I can make music with people I never would have done otherwise. Um, which I thought was, was a really cool thing that could come out of this. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like to present uh, singers from all over the country. I don't even know where everyone is from, singing Hide and Seek by Imogen Heap. Where
what you say.